So in this video, we're going to tackle some of the properties satisfied by the hyperbolic functions. A few of these we've already done, right? So in the very last video, well, we were trying to work out what the graphs of these three hyperbolic functions look like. We discovered that the derivative of hyperbolic sine is hyperbolic cos, and the derivative of hyperbolic cos is hyperbolic sine, which is quite nice, right? And it's just a straightforward application of derivative rules to these definitions, right? Derivative of e to the minus x gives you minus e to the minus x. Derivative of e to the x, of course, is just e to the x, okay? Um, now, uh, for the derivative of tan, let's, let's do, all, do all the derivatives while we're at it. Um, how do we do that? Well, we've got a number, we've got four different expressions here for, for hyperbolic tangent. Um, but maybe now that we know the derivatives for, for sine and cosine, it's easier to just apply quotient rule here, right? So the derivative of hyperbolic tan is going to be, so the derivative of the top is the derivative of hyperbolic sine times the bottom minus top times the derivative of the bottom, which is hyperbolic cos, divide by the bottom squared. Okay. Well, um, derivative of sanch is cosh, so this is cosh squared. minus sanch squared. I'm making myself say that just so we... Okay. Ah, but one of the other things that we already determined way back when we kind of first were exploring these definitions and where these come from, we said, oh, this is equal to one, right? Uh, it satisfies the equation for the unit hyperbola. We have this identity. Oh, so the numerator is one. We get one over hyperbolic cos squared, and just like with trig functions, one over cos, we call that secant. So this is secant hyperbolic um, squared. Okay, so the derivative of tan is secant squared, just like it was for trig functions. Very cool. Put that one down here. Secant hyperbolic squared. Very good. That leaves us with these two identities here to play around with. Let's try this one first. Um, now, we can, uh, we can get right into the definitions of these, but maybe, maybe you know what, let's, let's try, let's try writing in terms of sine and cos, right? That's typically a safe bet if you're not sure what to do. So tan h squared, uh, right, so that's uh, sanch, squared over cosh squared, right? One over cosh squared. So, sanch squared plus one over cosh squared, cosh squared. But come back to here, move that over, right? Hyperbolic sine squared plus one, it's hyperbolic cos squared. So this is hyperbolic cos squared over hyperbolic cos squared. Um, so this is also one, right? Now, these identities here uh, can be useful. If you think back to when we were doing, hyper, uh, when we were doing trigonometric substitution in integrals, right? When we we're trying to simplify expressions like, you know, if I have, say, x squared minus a squared, we said, you know, you can consider like a secant substitution for that, right? Um, or you can play around and you can say, well, you know, what, what else could we do with that? Um, we could say, we could do things like this. We could say, well, what if, what if I put x is equal to a times, let's say, cosh t? All right, well then this becomes 
becomes a squared times cosh squared t minus 1. All right? Um, bring that one over, bring the sign to the other side. This is the same thing as a squared sanch squared t. All right? Um, so we can, we can play games like that, right? Similar ones with this identity, right? It's tan h squared plus sec h squared is, is 1. We can, we can come up with, you know, applications for that in simplifying integrals, okay? So we, we get identities that kind of remind us of these Pythagorean identities that we had for the trig functions, and, and we can put them to similar uses depending on the scenario. Um, one left to go. Let's give it a try. For this one, I think we, we have no recourse but the definitions. So we have two times. So this is going to be e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2. And then for hyperbolic sine, e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2. Um, that's just a difference of squares, right? In the numerator, so that's the difference of squares. We have 2 squared on the bottom times 2. So what we actually get is we get this. We get e to the 2x minus e to the minus 2x over 2, okay, which is sanch 2x, right? Um, so, so the hyperbolic sine function satisfies that exact same double, well, maybe we shouldn't call it angle identity anymore, but that sort of same identity that we had for, for trig functions, right? For regular sine, sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x. We have it for hyperbolic functions as well. So there are a number of useful properties like this. Um, we've derived some of them. There are others you can find listed in the textbook. Um, we won't do them all in the videos, but this gives you a sample of some of them.